Hey guys, how you doing? Um, Dion Giddings here, here with Nashville Fit. So I'm gonna introduce myself once again, Dion Giddings, owner of Training Corner, um, Nashville kid, born and raised, um, former athlete, here to train the whole world at this point, it seems like. Um, so here's the introduction. Let's get it going. Um, so born and raised here. Um, my dad never played sports to my knowledge, so it's most people will think it's kind of weird. My mom was an athlete. She um, played high school, I think junior, middle school, high school basketball, but that's about where it stopped. Had a cousin that played um, with the Tennessee, well, I'm sorry, with the Houston Oilers. So he came out of USC. So a lot of my family's from LA. Um, that's kind of been the biggest influence for me. He always kind of checked in, you know, in eighth grade, he was already playing. So that's kind of where it started. But uh, football kicked off, it was natural. Basketball was my first love. So I was a multi-sport guy in high school and uh, middle school. Uh, went on, did pretty well at that, all-state performer. Um, had a slew of guys who went up playing college and a couple pro from a high school team. So that was always good. Um, went to TSU here in town. Um, did well there, had a, probably one of the best teams, I think, on record as far as black college, um, HBCU, and one AA. So we're going to be in number one in the nation in the one AA uh, my freshman year. Had two guys in front of me who I thought was two of the best corners I've ever seen, um, LeGarrie Giannis and uh, Eric Joyce. Um, long line of NFL guys in that TSU program. So kind of ushered me right in, passed the torch. Ended up getting a shot to play professional with the Buffalo Bills in 2004 once I graduated. Um, stayed there, did arena ball. And um, fast forward, maybe five, six years down the line, opened up training for him. Steve is actually, he's he's like a savior. I tell him all the time, like, man, you are like God sent. Because he actually gave me the opportunity to just get my foot in the door and, uh, at Coleman Community Center. So big shout out to Steve, man. He And he still to this day, still helps me out to where I am. So a huge shout out to Steve. And then I met you, Terry, like when just being over there. And what you don't even realize is you was dropping nuggets and gems in my ear. Just kind of, you know, at that time, I'm being new. I don't know pretty much the game per se. Um, but just watching you and see you work and just kind of developing um, a schedule, a rhythm, um, just kind of watching you and then asking questions when I could. And we would talk. You always give me good pointers on how to do stuff. And just staying, you know, just true to the game and true to yourself. So you don't even know that, but I'm telling you, man, like you definitely did that. So I want to give you a shout out too, man. You really helped me out in the early years. Yeah, Steve did it. I stayed over there for maybe a year and a half. And um, word of mouth, I mean, word of mouth, I, I stopped playing football. So I worked a job in the meantime, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I always knew I had a calling to do this. Um, after football, I worked at a storage company. So my brother was a general manager. And he was like, hey, in the meantime, so you figure out what you want, just come down and work. So what I would do for four years and maybe the last year and a half of that job, I would wake up 4.30, 5 a.m., go to the Coleman Park Community Center where I met you. I would go there from 6 to 9, well, 6 to 8.45, clock in from work from 9 to 6, go back to the gym and finish up from 6.30 to 8. Worked on Saturdays at my 9 to 5 job trained afterwards then i would go on sundays and do all my athletes so it's no days off it was seven days a week for about a year and a half two years and looking back on it that molded me to get the work habit and the ethic and just the, the, the push to work hard no matter who's looking it didn't really matter at that point i was just hungry for the success hungry for um just the grind i fell in love with the process i guess is the best way to say that um, it, it's nothing that anybody can do to give you that type of motivation. It, that has to come from within. Uh, so the byproduct of that was, you know, clientele gradually going. They always knew I would be there. So that was a good thing for me. Like, you know, not having a huge marketing budget, none to be, to be honest. Word of mouth, people knew they could always come, call me, pull up to the center, and I was there. Once I got that going, it kind of laid the groundwork for, you know, clientele down the years to come, which I didn't even know. A lot of those people I trained at the center, they still came to me when I had my own gym, opened it up, and they still come to me now. Um, so, as you know, in this business, longevity for clientele, is the turnover is so fast. So I've been blessed to have 
you know, long tenure clients. I mean, 12 years, 10 years, five, you know, when they come, they usually stay. And I, and I think that's from, I think they see the hard work I put in just without them even being there. So that's them from the Coleman Center, Burn the Midnight Oil, and just knowing it, it's something bigger. You know, the push has to come from within, and, you know, nobody can ever, they don't tell you that part. I mean, they don't tell you that. I mean, you can go get a certification, you can do whatever you want for paperwork goes, but, you know, until you get hands on, grind it out, in the dirt, you, you really won't understand. Um, but it got to a point to where I actually picked up a um, corporate account while I was still at the center. So I had to change my schedule for my nine to five job to where I took off on Fridays just to train on. But when I would go to this corporate account, I would train 10 to 15 people from 6 a.m. to 3.35 p.m. I started making more money training on that one day than I would do almost in a week's time with my other job. Once that started happening, the light bulb just kind of went off. I'm like, you know what? I'm killing myself going both jobs. I'm just going to take a leap of faith. Um, the funny thing is how this even happened. I was standing in an apartment complex. And it was time to renew my lease. I'll never forget this. This is how God works. And I, and I asked God, you know, this is what you want me to do. Give me, give me five new clients by the end of the week. I quit my job. I quit, you know, staying up all night, week after week, month after month. I was kind of getting burned out. Um, but I was just scared to take that leap of faith, to be honest. Didn't know, you know, stability is one thing. Jumping into the entrepreneur world is something different. Nobody ever showed me the ropes to do it. I just kind of did it on my own. So by the end of the week, I had 10 new people. 10 new people, and that was a sign for me it's time to go. 10 new people, I, I, I left. And, uh, you know, of course, I had been kind of building up, building up in the meantime. And um, opened up Training Corner probably about four months later. And it's, it's been training for me ever since then. Um, 2012 is when I moved in. Early years of Training Corner is me by myself. Um, you know, I was over at Old Harden Place um, in the back of, back of then Pound for Pound. But now it was um, Swift Kick MMA. So, you know. Had a good run over there with them. They were they were nice, lovely people. Uh, fast forward to 2019, leases up. Um, in that process, we've had multiple people come in from you know we had youth programs, we had uh, boot camps that we did, professional athletes, uh, junior population, weekend warriors. I mean, it ended up being about six independent independent trainers that we had, you know, at one time, which was unheard of in Nashville at that time, uh, especially being black owned. That that you couldn't find it. Uh, so as we spoke about people like um Jarrell, Jarrell Webb who's doing uh, doing great things. Um Tara Smith, Tara Trainer, she's doing a great thing. She's in um the Hickory Hollow location, Antioch. I think she's going on her third year, so she's doing big things. Uh, Marty Weaver, who was an MMA fighter, boxer, doing phenomenal things in Atlanta. Uh Tayshawn. Uh, he's in Atlanta doing stuff. So we had a lot of people. I'm leaving some people out, but Wilson, uh, we got Dewan. I mean, it's so many people that came through. And it kind of made the environment, the training corner, like, I feel like unmatched. Um, so well, I signed on the lease for five years, 15,000 square feet. Right before COVID hit, transitioning, moving out, in the works of getting everything built, building process. COVID comes and just kind of wipes out everything. Uh, it was sad. I mean, I was definitely hurt by that. Didn't understand why the reason was. Uh, COVID affected all of us, though, in, in so many different ways. So it was a learning experience for me, um, having to start from literally zero, scratch. Gym was no longer. Um, had to find somewhere to go. Went outside for the next eight months. In that eight-month span, I ended up getting 73 clients for eight months. And it was an outlet. We was outside in the heat. The snow, I mean, rain, whatever it is. And and I think it just found a release for people during COVID. Um, people were tired of being stuck at home. I think some of them just didn't want to do the, you know, stay at home workouts. They wanted to be out in the air. So we went to the park. We went to Cambridge Park. And, and anybody that drove by us at that time, they knew who was out there. It was like clockwork, at least three times a, a day. And I did that five days a week. Um, and it just turned into something big and something I think saved a lot of people, to be honest with you. Um, 
And once we moved back inside, Steve, again, to my rescue, Steve told me, hey, you need a place to go in the meantime so you get yourself together, you go to Southeast Community Center. And um, that's, that's where I've been for the last, I guess, two and a half years, three years now. So it's been a process. It's been a learning experience like no other. Only something like this can, can teach you some of the, the, the stripes of life that I've gained in the last probably three years. Number one, we're human. So part of this, it, it, it's going to test you in every single way. The part they won't tell you about entrepreneurship, it's, it's, it's really not a rule book to it. I mean, you can try to find stuff, but until you completely emerge yourself in this lifestyle um, and learn from the, I won't necessarily say losses, but the failures can teach you more than any success could ever teach you. Um, through this process, I met my wife. We just celebrated a one-year anniversary, um, you know, November 20th this year. So that's been a blessing. She's been in my corner from day one. Um, so having somebody who, no matter who it is, to, to, to preach that word of encouragement to you during those trying times, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, knowing why you really got into it. It can't be just for, you know, the money value, the materialistic aspect of it. It has to be something that was that's within. Um, Passion comes from from you. So you have to set your goals and set your eyes on something and work no matter what. Even when maybe your mom or your sister or whoever it is in your family, they might not understand it. You might be the only one with that goal in your head. You have to believe in yourself. You cannot give up. You never know how close you are. You just never know. It's going to be times where, as a personal trainer, you sit in there and nobody comes through the doors. Rent is still due. Mortgage, mortgage at home is due, car note, all of the above. You are against the wall, but you have to believe that this is why I'm here. This is the purpose. You have to keep working. And um, things do change. Don't get too high. Don't get too low is advice that I always got from other people, and I, and I live that to this day. I never had a mentor in the fitness game. Nobody ever showed me how to do it. So it was always something natural that I just kind of took on myself. Um, but you were probably the first one who actually started putting bits and pieces of this knowledge. It, it could be some small I would come in, might ask you or see you at the front desk or see you kind of in passing. And uh, we might, it might be three minutes. But just those words of encouragement sometimes is all I really needed. Um, so I definitely suggest that if this is what you want to do, find somebody who can you actually talk to, um, somebody who's been there before, or even if they haven't, somebody who shared that same passion for this because. Only the strongest survive in this. I mean, it's, it's a saturated field at this point, um, but you can find your niche in this game. But the relationships, uh, mentorship, and even the friendships that you gain from this and people who you feel like you can reach out to, they're the ones who are going to help you along the way. Um, it's not a money value you can put on it. There's it, no money value on it. It's just pure relational um, it's not transactional or something that people just want to see you succeed and be successful. So um, you find people like that and you kind of stick to them no matter what. And you will see those relationship blossoms and the fruit from that tree alone. I'm a living testimony of it. The relationships I've created from training in the business world, um, you know, people I consider like lifelong friends now, people that got invited to my wedding, wouldn't have known them if I wasn't doing training. So it's very important to create that, you know, and, and you have to be approachable as well. It's not always on the other person to come to you. So you have to make sure that you're open book as well. Um, you know, it's a lot of vulnerability in this. You're going to be vulnerable at certain times, but that's how you grow. So my biggest thing is to be uncomfortable. It's okay. Learn how to be in it. But I always have somebody you can always lean on, no matter who that is. Uh, that's going to make the biggest difference. Last quarter, 2022, um, big push to the end of the year. But, um, I have some big things coming up in the works. Um, rebirth of a new gym, I say. Um, so just hold tight. Nashville, we got something big coming. Um, it's going to be something that the city is going to love, something that you will want to be a part of. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. To be continued, stay tuned.